What is up, YouTube? Welcome to Panfro Games. In today's video, we're going to be covering the final ultimate guide for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In today's video, we're going to be covering Pokemon 101 to the very last dex number in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC, the Indigo Disc. Now, if you want to see the first 100, check out the previous video, which is in the video description below. And of course, guys, if you like this type of content, enjoy these videos, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new. I really appreciate it. Consider supporting the channel by joining the Pan Fam by hitting that join channel member button below. So before we dive in, if you want to know how we do all the shiny hunting methods in this game, we do have a video for you. I made an ultimate shiny hunting guide that covers every method from outbreaks to egg hatching and everything else in between. So definitely check that out. This video is just going to be covering the best locations with the best sandwich to use for each Pokemon that is left in the Indigo Disc decks. Our first hunt is going to be the Goth Pokemon line with a Psychic type sandwich. And you can actually do this in Indigo Disc, phenomenal spot to get the full family. We're going to be right here in the coastal biome on the bridge over here. We're going to jump off the bridge into the torchlight cave system. And there is a phenomenal reset that you can actually do here. So we're going to go through the first room and jump up. And then from there, it's only going to be goth Pokemon spawning. And now we're going to be in this room and we want to get to the right side of it from where we entered. And you want to get up right into the corner of the room here. And you can actually do a picnic reset right into the corner. You gotta make sure that one you're facing the right way and it can take a little bit of time to get it there's also an even easier spot right here if we're doing it right here you can do a second type sandwich and bam so sometimes you'll get a couple of slow pokes spotting in but that's honestly okay this is going to be the vast majority is going to be in the entire goth line most importantly you do get the first form spotting in here which is definitely going to be the best way to hunt it there is a town reset that you can do in Paudia, and that town reset is going to be, I believe, in Zapakiko. So if you want to just isolate the first form, you can do it right over here in Zapakiko East of a Psychic type sandwich, but the only spawn on the town's border. And that's what I recommend in the original ultimate guide for the base game, but I think this is even easier. Now, the shiny hunt for this is gonna be a little bit tricky because when you look up, they're not going to have a really big different color. The big tail is going to be their eyes are going to be purple instead of blue. And also their body color instead of this dark black is going to be like a dark blue black. But I do think this is the best area to actually do to hunt for all three of them. Good luck on this hunt. Next up is Esper Meowskick with a Psychic type sandwich. And you can isolate Shiny Hunt it actually in this entire zone. But I'm doing it right on this wall right here because I do get a 15 spawn reset right over here which is very nice and the shinies for these pokemon are incredibly obvious so the esper is going to be a pink shiny while the meow stick male and female which i would recommend going for both because they're rather easy is going to be like a golden and white color to them there's more inverted on the male and the female but it's super easy to do this shiny hunt right over here you get a bunch of spawns spawning right there so you only have to really look at one spot now if you don't want to do that reset spot you could just run around on the beach the beach is only going to be these cats walking around, but there isn't a really a good 15 spawn reset outside of just doing a 360 spin with your camera. So you could try to do that as well. It'll work just the same, or you can do a run around. Good luck on this hunt. Next up is Meteor, and I'm gonna be doing this hunt with a flying type sandwich at the Charstone Cavern. Now there are multiple places you can do the Meteor hunt. But this place works out great because you can see you get your full amount of 15 spawns, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now, this meteor hunt is going to require a new method called a 16 hunt method. This can work on any Pokemon, but because we cannot actually see meteor shining in the overworld, you want to do a picnic reset and then count to 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15. So I have 15 Meteors on the screen right now, which means none of them are shiny. Now, if I counted 16 Meteors, that means one is guaranteed shiny. Then you would save your game, and then you would attempt to auto battle all of them. And the one that you try to auto battle, but it does not actually work on, will be the shiny Pokemon. I have a full video guide on that method just uh, in full detail, or you can check out the ultimate shiny hunting guide for all shiny hunting methods in Scarlet and Violet. But that's going to be the best way to hunt Meteor. And Meteor is going to have seven different forms. 
I will recommend doing outbreaks to get all seven different forms because outbreaks can spawn anywhere and each outbreak will only have one form attached to them. So good luck on the shiny hunt. Next up is Cranidos and Shield on and these can be isolated shiny hunted with a rock type sandwich right at this location. So just to the east of the Canyon outdoor classroom. Now these are version exclusive. So I'm going to be doing the exact same spot here for both Shield on and Cranidos. You want to be right here. There's going to be like a rock on your left, a little patch of grass in the middle, and then a tree to your right. This is what you're aiming for, and you get a full 15 spawn reset for both Craniodos and Shield On with a rock type sandwich. I would not recommend a steel type sandwich for Shield On, as you will also be getting Skarmoring here. So I would not recommend that either, but this would be a relatively easy shiny hunt. Uh, red for Craniodos and Shield On is probably a little bit easier to shiny hunt at night. So you can actually better tell like the blue versus this standard color. Good luck. Next up is Minchino and Chinchino. And we're going to be doing a Plaza Town reset method in Polar with a normal type sandwich. So you can see here, you get a lot of these chinchillas spawning. And you can get a couple Porygons and sometimes Smeargles, but it's a really good town reset. And your shinies are incredibly obvious. So what you're going to do here is you're just going to run up to the side corner right here. Pop your head right out. Wait for the spawns to come and you want to try to get your full 15. Usually you get most of them to your right side. Sometimes you'll get a couple to your left, but they do get pack spawns as well, which is really nice. And the shiny is going to be a red and it's going to be golden too. So look for a red or golden rat and you'll be easily able to shiny hunt these guys. Of course, you can do an outbreak method if you want to do a pure ISO, but they are the dominant spawn here. So I would definitely recommend it. Good luck. Next up is going to be Skarmory with a steel type sandwich. And we're going to be right over here to the east of the Canyon Outdoor Classroom. Now in Pokemon Scarlet, this is an isolate shiny hunt with a steel type sandwich. Now, if you're in Pokemon Violet, I would actually recommend doing this as a mass outbreak as a steel type sandwich will get you shield on as well, which can be rather annoying. Now the shiny for this is going to be incredibly obvious. Instead of this silver color, it's going to be more of a bronze green to it. So it will be very noticeable. Good luck on this hunt. Next up is Swablu and Altaria. And I recommend actually going for a mass outbreak of Swablu. Unfortunately, there is no way to isolate Shiny Hunt for Swablu slash Altaria, whether in Paldia or in the Indigo's This DLC. They can spawn around the lake during the daytime, so you could do a runaround, but it's not going to be an isolated shiny hunt. And just remember that Swablu is a normal and a flying type Pokemon, so you want to go for one of those sandwiches and not necessarily a dragon sandwich unless you only want an Altaria. Good luck. Next up is Magmite and Magneton. In my personal opinion, the best spot for this hunt is going to be right at the grass here with an electric type sandwich. Now you get a full 15 spawns, which is really nice, but it's not the only place to hunt this, but I like this place the most because it's an easy picnic reset right here on the grass. As you can see, we're on one of the fingers on the grass, looking right towards the pillar here, and you can see the sign in front of it. I like it because you get your full 15 spawns fast and easy. There is a town reset that you can do Magmamite on at Lavencia. However, you don't get your full 15 when you do it here, but it is a town reset, so that's gonna be up to you. But I like going for my full 15 spawns. The shiny for Magmite is gonna be like a black gold color to it and same for Magneton, but it'll definitely stick out. Good luck on these hunts. Next up is Plusle and Minum, and these are gonna be spawning in the Charged Stone Cave with an electric type sandwich. However, you cannot isolate shiny hunt for these guys. You're gonna have to do an outbreak that will spawn underground in Charged Stone. Now, the Minum shiny is really obvious. It's gonna be like a mint green instead of the blue on its ears. And Plusle is going to be like a dark red instead of the standard red, which is a little bit harder for sure. But you just gotta keep on doing your outbreak resets until you eventually get the right outbreak. Good luck. Next up is Golet and Go Lurk. And I'm gonna be using a ghost type sandwich in the canyon biome right on this path area over here. And you can do a nice little picnic reset. Now, the one issue with this hunt is Go Lurk is so big and they don't really move. They actually cover the active spawn points, which can definitely be problematic for a reset hunt method for this guy. So I would definitely recommend an outbreak because wherever you go trying to do these hunts, Go Lurk is such a problem. And the fact that they don't move and cover the spawn points means you're never going to be able to get your full 15 spawn. So I do recommend hunting for an outbreak of these guys. And their shinies are pretty obvious too. 
So good luck. Next up is Nummel in Camp Rop, and we're gonna be going to North Province Area 2 with a ground type sandwich. This is my exact positioning here, just south of the Fire Scourge Shrine over on this mountain hill. And as you can see, I'm on the part of the hill that has like this triangle point. And you do a picnic reset here and get a full 15 spawns of the Nummel and Camp Rob. Now the Camp Rob Shiny is gonna be all black, purple color. So it's gonna be super easy to notice. And the Nummel is gonna have a light blue color on its top instead of that light green. It'll definitely stick out in the group. So super easy shiny hunt. Sometimes you will get a spawn behind you. So if you don't see all 15 spawns, just make sure to check behind you because sometimes they can spawn right behind you. So just do a quick turnaround. But this is a relatively easy shiny hunt. Good luck. Our next shiny hunt is going to be Sinus T, and the best way to do it is going to be going to the Psychic Type Gym area with a Ghost Type Sandwich. And you can hunt this with a Town Reset method. So I'm on the edge of the town right here, and we just walk towards the town and walk right back out. We'll be able to see them. Now, if you want to get the authentic Sinus T, I would recommend going for an Outbreak. And there are outbreaks of only authentic versions. So I would recommend going into a outbreak, catching the first one you see. If it has the authentic mark, then you know you're an authentic outbreak. And then knock out 60 and hope it works. Now, these guys are relatively small, so it might be hard to do a reset just because it's a little bit hard to tell they're shiny from a distance. When you get up close, it's going to be much easier to actually see. But it's still a relatively de decently hard hunt. So I would recommend an outbreak overall in general. Good luck. Next up is Porygon, and we have a really great method for this. So we're gonna be in Charge Stone Cave of a normal type sandwich. And at the top of this hill, you can isolate Shiny Hunt for Porygon. Now, this is gonna be in the upper part of Charge Stone. So just to show off, you want to go past this era Porygon that's in the center here. And then you wanna go up the path that does not have the crystal. So you wanna go up this way. So go up this way and then go past this bigger crystal, not the path that has the crystal that goes below. And then from there, you want to get to the top of the stairs. And as you can see, we're going to be getting pretty much only Porygon for the most part here. But we're going to be doing a picnic reset at the top of the stairs, which is going to make this hunt relatively easy. And the shiny is very easy to notice as well. It's going to be a blue shiny. So, okay, we're at the top of the hill now. We're going to look down and this is where we're going to be able to get our spawns to a picnic reset and pretty much for the most part is going to be only porygons you may get a couple of other spawns but there's no other normal type so you don't have to worry about other pokemon spawning in a lot uh, just make sure that you're not too far up the hill you will probably get like maybe one spawn behind you but this is definitely the goaded spot for porygon so good luck on this shiny hunt next up is joltik and we're going to be going to charge stone cavern with a bug type sandwich and right next to this fly stop right here we're just gonna be chilling here and do a picnic reset for your full 15 spawns. Now, the shiny is actually pretty obvious. It's going to be like a highlighter, bright, like sort of yellow green color to it instead of the standard yellow. So you can actually see it from a distance. It'll look a little bit radioactive. So you'll be good to go on this hunt. You could also do it as a runaround in charge stone, uh, which I actually personally did to great success. But I think a picnic reset is definitely going to be the way to go. Good luck. Next up is Time No, and I recommend doing this mon as a outbreak. Now, the Electros line can be very annoying, especially Time No, because the shiny is hard to see. So I recommend going for an outbreak. You can do it in Charged Stone. If you have an Electric type sandwich, they'll spawn, but there is a million Electric type Pokemon that spawn. However, around these blue crystals, Time Modes will spawn a little bit more. So you could go for that. But the best way to do it is try to get a mass outbreak somewhere in charge zone and then knock out 60. Luckily, they will spawn on land outside of uh, this area. They will spawn in the water in the base game and also in Kitakami. But I don't really like water hunting. So your best bet is charge zone cave, do a mass outbreak and get your time no. And then from there, you can go to an electric, which has a much easier shiny to notice. And once again, I would recommend a outbreak in charge stone or you can just run around in the area where time no spawns and you'll be good to go. Good luck. Next up is Beldum a Tang. And the best spot is going to be in Polar with a Psychic type sandwich. We're already going to be on the border here on the wall. The closest zone is going to be Polar Outdoor Classroom 2. Or you can come from Polar Plaza and just go directly south. So we're going to be right here. And you can see that we can do a picnic reset and get a full 15 spawns of these guys. Incredibly easy shiny to notice because they're going to be like a silver platinum color. Uh, for their body so it's gonna be really easy to notice and they're gonna have some gold tips too 
relatively easy shiny hunt for the pseudo legendary just keep in mind that their catch rate is three percent like a legendary so definitely recommend using a master ball or at least a false white mon they do not have takedown in this game so that's awesome good luck next up is the axu line and you can actually isolate shiny hunt axu with a dragon type sandwich just south of artisan over on this area right here i found you can do a pretty decent 15 spawn reset so if you want to just go to the edge of this like mountain side of a dragon type sandwich just do your picnic reset and you'll be getting your 15 axus now the shiny axu is going to be relatively obvious because we just got a shiny immediately it's going to be lighter skin right there and it's going to have a purple neck thing so super easy to notice a shiny and there you go hopefully get the same luck as me i would just recommend going for three axes in this spot instead of going for like a fracture somewhere else but fracture shiny is pretty obvious it's going to be a blue shiny as well Good luck. Next up is going to be Seal and Dugong. And I actually recommend going for a Mass Outbreak just because it's hard to isolate Shiny Hunt a water or ice type Pokemon in an ice type area in Indigo Disc. But we can do a town reset. I'm using a water type sandwich right here. And in Polar, you just want to go out, get your 15 spawns, and then come back. Now, if you have not unlocked the spot starters yet, you can actually make this an isolate shiny hunt with a water type sandwich. So it is possible, but most people, if you're watching this by now, probably unlock the starters in each biome. So you most likely will not have a experience where it's just gonna be only seal. But it's a relatively easy shiny hunt in general. I do recommend the mass outbreak and the shiny is gonna be like a more of a golden white. So gotta pay attention for a little bit of a brighter white color. Good luck. Next up is Lapras, and we're gonna be using an ice type sandwich just right next to Polar Rest area to the west on this little iceberg. And with an ice type sandwich, you'll only be getting Lapras and Dugongs. Now, it is not isolated, but you only need one Lapras, and I think it's relatively easy to do this hunt. Just spin the camera in a circle, and about half the spawns will be Lapras. And Shiny Lapras is going to be purple, so it's gonna be super obvious. And maybe we'll get lucky and get a Shiny Dugong while doing this method too. Good luck on this shiny hunt. Next up is Hisuian Quillfish and same spot as Lapras with a dark type sandwich this time. We're just gonna picnic reset on this iceberg. And you can see we got a bunch of these Quillfish spawning in the area, which is very cool. The shiny is gonna be more of like a silver platinum color on it. So super easy to see whether it's above water or under. And you wanna get two of these so you can get yourself a nice shiny over quill. Good luck. Next up is the Reuniclus line, and we're gonna use the Psychic type sandwich and go to Polar Plaza to isolate Shiny Hunt, and we're gonna be doing a town reset method. As you can see, we're gonna get some Soulless and Duosion spawning in. Now, these Shinies can definitely be incredibly hard to see. So, yes, this is a great method to try to hunt them. However, I will recommend you probably do a mass outbreak just because it's really hard to see the Shiny, especially from a distance up close you can have a better shot of actually seeing the difference on them. And you're looking for like a, on the Solosis, like a red instead of like that yellow orange uh, spiral on this like forehead. The color is also gonna be a little bit different of the uh, like cell it's in, but the color and the lighting in this game can be definitely be really hard. It's the most obvious on Reuniclus. And for some reason, the Wojin is the hardest to actually see. So this can be a relatively hard hunt. Good luck on next up is snubble and grand bull we're gonna be using a fairy type sandwich and we're gonna be just south of polar plaza and you want to aim for this part of the map right here there's a cave entrance right here and you know you're in the right cave when you see a matang i already knocked out the matang but the matang will be in the cave and this will only spawn snubbles and grand bulls which is very awesome and to get the full 15 spawns you want to go back here and you'll be able to get them all. And the shiny snubble is incredibly obvious. It's gonna be like Pennywise colors. And the shiny Gramble is also pretty obvious too. It's gonna to be more of a like a golden yellow color. Now to do a picnic reset, you can actually do it in the cave. You're gonna to have to line this up right. I may not get it on my first try. Yeah, I didn't get it on my first try, but you wanna line this up with the rocks. I wanna be a little bit towards more the center, lined up with the rocks here. There we go. And then you can actually do the picnic reset. So. You just want to reset there and then run back into the corner, get your full 15 spawns, and keep doing this until you eventually get your shiny snubble slash gramble. Good luck on this hunt. Next up is Cub Shoot and Baratic, and there is no way to isolate shiny hunt these guys, whether in Indigo Disc or in Paladio. So I recommend just doing an ice type sandwich, resetting in these areas until you eventually get the Cub Chew outbreak. 
Good luck on that hunt. Next up is Alolan Vulpix and Alolan Sandshrew. These are version exclusives, but they are hunted with an ice type sandwich and in the exact same location. And we're doing this in Scarlet, so we'd be getting Vulpix. So we want to go up to this cave right over here, the cave that has the Matang, and I'm going to be using an ice type sandwich, running into this cave. I've already knocked out a Matang, but pretty much you're going to be able to get your spawns fast and easy here. And I'll say that the Alolan Sandshrew is much more obvious on its shiny. But you'll be getting up to 15 spawns in that corner, which is very nice. The Vulpix is going to be more of a purplish to it. So, like, you just got to look at it, and you'll see some purple on its face. Uh, on where the, some of the blue is on its face will be purple instead. Now, to actually do the picnic reset, you want to be a little bit far away from these rocks. Do a picnic reset, like, right this, pretty much sort of in the middle of the room. And then once you do that reset, you're going to head all the way back to the corner and you're going to watch them spawn in from the opposite corner. Now, these spawns are relatively fast because you will get some cluster spawns coming in, which is pretty uh, solid. And you can only get the Vulpix pretty much by doing this isolated. So this is the best spot. Same thing with Sandshrew. This is the best and only isolated spot for Sandshrew in the game. So good luck on these hunt. Next up is the Snover line. And there's no way to isolate Shiny Hunt for this, whether you're in Paldea or the Indigo Disc. But if you use a grass type sandwich, you could do a runaround method and only be Snovers and the Deer Lane line. So you have a 50 50 shot on a runaround method for the most part here. But I will recommend probably an Outbreak. But if you just want to get a Deer Lane or a Snover, then running around is pretty fair. You could also use an Ice type sandwich and just go for it all the ice type mons of a runaround method in general throughout the polar mountain or with or, th or throughout Paldia. Next up is Duraludon and Archladon and the best way to shiny hunt these guys is going to be going where we did the Beldum hunt just south of the polar plaza with a dragon type sandwich which is an isolate shiny hunt full 15 spawns here which is very cool and the shiny is actually relatively obvious it's not going to have a red tip it's going to be a silver tip and it's going to be more of a darker silver on its body and the darker blue too. So it will stick out a little bit as well. But of course, you can just walk up to the group, see if any of them are going to have no silver tip. And then just go back to the reset area, picnic, and good luck on this shiny hunt. Next up is Hydrapple. And the only way to really shiny hunt this is a shiny hunt for an Applin. We're going to use a dragon type sandwich and tag tree thicket. We're going to be right next to the Poison Cruise base logo right here. And this is exactly where we are. So you're going to see this one tree to our left. And you're going to see an Applin right in front of us. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a big Pokemon in the front. doesn't really matter what the big Pokemon is. It just has to be a big Pokemon. We're going to get onto our ride Pokemon, run into the tree, hit it, run back to the previous tree, throw our uh, first Pokemon, which is a big Pokemon. And we're just going to stand here. And this is an AFK shiny hunting method. Pretty much non-shiny Applins will always fall down and get knocked out. But a shiny Applin will stay there in the tree and not get knocked out. It's going to be a green shiny. It's going to be super obvious. You can pretty much leave your controller away for a while. I'll just check in every like 5-10 minutes. Sometimes the AI can get messed up. But for the most part, this is AFK and a goaded method. So good luck on this shiny hunt. Now starting with our grass type hunts, we're going to go for Bulbasaur first. And you can either use a grass type or a poison type sandwich for this hunt, which are on the screen here. And we are currently in the coastal area. And from the coastal area, we want to go on top of the labyrinth. And on top of the labyrinth, we're going to go up to the highest point, fly up here. Or you can just climb up there, it doesn't really matter. And we already have the sandwich up with the Bulbasaur. So you can see we're getting a bunch of Bulbasaur. But the ideal picnic reset is going to be right on the edge right here. Now, we're going to try to get our picnic reset going. Perfect. We're not too close to the edge, so we're able to get that picnic reset off. And in this location, you can get up to 15 spawns of the Bulbasaur. Now, I will say I would recommend knocking out any of the Terra Pokemon, as we have one Terra Pokemon over there that is going to take a spawn, which isn't the nicest. So definitely recommend taking that out. And you can also get spawns down here as well. So pretty much just do your picnic reset, look on the top, and then look to the bottom, and then come back. Move your camera back to the top and then do your reset. And you should get this shiny fairly easily. Shiny Bulbasaur is pretty obvious. It's going to be like a light green body instead of the blue body. So it's going to be super easy and stand out. Now for fire type Pokemon. And we're going to be using a fire type sandwich in the Savannah to isolate Shiny Hunt for Charmander. And we're going to be in Savannah Rest Area 1. And this is one of the best hunting methods in the game. 
as we can do a town reset by walking to the terrarium, walking back out into it, and you'll be able to get your 15 spawns quickly. Sometimes they do clusters, sometimes it's individuals. It's super easy and fast to keep on doing this over and over and over again. Now, shiny Charmander is pretty obvious to me. It's gonna be a golden shiny. It's gonna be like a bright golden yellow instead of that red. It really does stick out, especially in the shadows, which is luckily where this hunt is taking place because of that tree there. So good luck on this shiny hunt. Now, our next hunt to begin the water types is Squirtle, and water types are still pretty bad to hunt in the Indigo Disc. Now, Squirtle only spawns in these lower water areas of the canyon area, and it's not great. You can't isolate it, so this is 100% going to be a picnic reset slash a mass outbreak method. So once you get that mass outbreak, hopefully it's in a good spot, and then you want to do that picnic reset. I will recommend using a level two water sandwich uh, to definitely get that mass outbreak. So hopefully you can just stand in the canyon area and just eventually get yourself a good mass outbreak. Do you think I can get one right here with one shot? Probably not. I did get a Seedra though. So you, we at least know that a water sandwich is boosting it, but yeah, no cigar on that. Good luck. Next up is Chikorita. And this is absolutely one of the worst hunts to do in the Indigo Disc. Now this Pokemon really only spawns in the Southern coastal area, pretty much right around here. So you're gonna have to use a grass type sandwich to even see them in general. And there's a bunch of other grass type Pokemon. There's Executor, there's Execute, there's Deerling. It's a complete disaster of a mess. So the only way to really hunt this is going to do the mass outbreak method. So I recommend having a level two grass type sandwich. Use the calculator to make one, or you can honestly just use sandwich number 105, the great cloth uh, sandwich. That'll give you grass encounter level two. And then you wanna pretty much stand on this tile and just do the whole mass outbreak reset method. Like once your date and time, going that, hitting okay. And then you'll get new mass outbreaks and just hope you get a Chikorita one that spawns over here. It is a fairly rare mass outbreak though. So it's gonna be brutal. But having that grass type sandwich is going to give you a little bit of an odds of getting grass type Pokemon spawning and outbreaks. Like we got Vile Plume and Executor. So good luck on this shiny hunt. Next up, this Cinequil, which is definitely one of the worst hunts in the Indigo Disc. But we do have a phenomenal method to actually shiny hunt it. So you want to be in the polar area with the fire type sandwich. And it only spawns in this one cave right over here. So here's the cave entrance. There's like a trainer up there. So you see the trainer, go to the right of the trainer. You're at the cave entrance. Now, what you need to do is first thing, there's going to be some sort of Terra Pokemon here. You're going to knock out the Terra Pokemon. The quickest way to do it, if you don't know, is to do Synchro Mode and just have your uh, Synchro Mon just auto battle it. You totally avoid the whole fight. We did knock out a Cynical for fun there. So now that we have done that, and now you want to set up your Fire Type Sandwich, you can do it inside the cave or outside of the cave. Uh, but this one can be rather tricky. So what we're going to do, we're going to go up here. You want to go up into this corner and you're going to do a picnic reset here. The fire type sandwich. Now, there's a little bit more to that. There's a little bit more because you can't just stand here. What you need to do is you need to walk to the left and you're just going to wait a little bit. You're just going to wait until some cynical starts spawning because there is only one spawn point with one spawner that is going to spawn cynicals naturally in the game outside of a mass outbreak. And if a Cyndaquil is standing on the spawner, then another Cyndaquil won't spawn in, which is definitely problematic. So this can be really fast 15 or really slow 15. You can see we have a couple running out now. I'm just gonna go down and check and see what we got. So we got a decent batch. But you can see we had a couple Cyndaquils just standing here. So they were blocking the spawner. So in general, I feel like it's faster just to like walk down, check on them. Like, okay, I don't see a shiny, just reset. Or if you don't see a bunch of Cyndaquils, walking away then just do the picnic reset so we'll just do it again one more time because yeah this is definitely one of the best pieces of tech of shiny hunting that we discovered in the game so far so once again do that picnic reset go over here and the shiny cinequil is going to be pretty obvious then having that like greenish back is going to be more of a tan color like a brown tan so super obvious the spot uh definitely recommend saving before you get that shiny because this is one of those that you do not want to do a shiny fail, accidentally knock it out for some reason. 
But yeah, we waited a little bit. We can check out how many spawns we got here. Pretty decent. Decent amount of spawns for sure. Of course, if you wait longer, you can get more spawns. Up to you how long you want to wait. So good luck on this hunt. Now the Gen 2 curse continues with Totodile because Totodile has such an awful hunt. It only spawns the Savannah, only in this body of water right here. And if you do a water type sandwich, yes, Totodile will be this super rare spawn, but more likely you're going to see dew piders and brockfish. It's awful. It's terrible. This is 100% a mass outbreak. And I think it's one of the worst, if not the worst shiny hunt in the entire game because this mass outbreak is so incredibly rare. So good luck. Next up is Trico, which is a relatively easy shiny hunt. So you want to go to either like the Canyon Plaza or Canyon Outdoor Classroom. And you want to go right over here, pretty much exactly where I'm at on like the more south uh, eastern part of the area here with a grass type sandwich, of course. And you can do a nice picnic reset hunt here. So what you want to do is sort of get on the rock. If you don't want to get too close. You can actually fall down. So that wouldn't be nice. I actually like in between this rock and this tree here to do the reset because you do get good spawns to your left and to your right. So we're just going to do the picnic reset method with that level three grass type sandwich. And you will be getting your 15 spawns of Trico. Now, I will recommend once again to remove that Terra Pokemon in the back because that will eat up one of your spawns. So make sure to uh, destroy it and then you'll be able to get one more Trico spawn and then make it a little bit easier. But yeah, you can see the Tricos are coming into the left, coming in also to the right a little bit. The shiny for Trico is very obvious. It's going to be a dark green, and it's going to have, like, a red tail to it. So it's going to stick out in the grass, so don't really worry. It's going to show up super easy, and good luck on this shiny hunt. Our next hunt is going to be Torchic, and Torchic is an only one cave in the game. So we're going to go south of the Polar Plaza here and keep on going south, and you want to be right here. This is the entrance to the cave. The cave is actually right here, but this is where I'm currently standing, as you can see. There is a cave, and there's a Terra Pokemon inside. So first things first, you want to knock out the Terra Pokemon. It's going to be a Matang. So we know the Synchro trick. Just use the trink Synchro, hit L and R, knock it out, avoid the fight, save. About a minute of your life right there. Now from there, the best way to actually do the Torchic is you can get 15 spawns coming in by doing a picnic reset in the cave. So what you want to do, you want to be sort of in the middle of the cave, but more on the right side. So this is how far I am from the two rocks on the right side of the cave here. Pretty much you want to be sort of in between them, but you know, a little bit far away from them. So hopefully this gives you a nice visual guide. So once you're in this spot, you want to do a picnic reset. This will respawn all the Pokemon in the general area. And once you do that reset, you're going to go all the way to the back part of the cave. Uh, you can like go behind this rock or you can go over here and the Torchic will start spawning in. You will be able to get 15 spawns of Torchic. So it's going to be a super easy hunt. The shiny is very obvious. The yellow and the orange are going to be reversed on it. So it's going to definitely stick out in the crowd here. And yeah, once you get your 15 spawns, you don't get your shiny. It's like, okay, just run back here. Do your picnic reset and good luck on this shiny hunt. Now, finally, an easy water type to shiny hunt for, which is going to be Mudkip. So Mudkip is actually easier than you think. So we're going to be over here in the coastal area. Just under this bridge, this is going to leave us into the labyrinth. Now, Mudkip will be the only water type that spawns in the Labyrinth. So we're going to go through here, dodge those guys. And you can see we get Mudkip spawning. However, there is a phenomenal 15 spawn reset we can do. So just climb up here, follow the path. And hey, you could do a run around and potentially get a shiny Mudkip as well. But this is definitely going to be more efficient. So this is the room you want to be in. You can actually do a picnic reset in this room. So what you want to do is you want to get over to the other side. Over here, actually, you want to be on over here. So you want the torch on the left, and you want it to be in between these blocks. And then you're going to try to do a picnic reset. So you want to actually be more in the corner. You get that picnic reset. There we go. So we nailed it. So it is very particular on the spot. You got to be right over here. But it is relatively easy because you do get your 15 spawns and it is a lot faster to run around the cave because you will be generating more spawns and new spawns as well. So it's super easy to see. Now, the only thing is, yes, they will spawn behind that rock. So if you're a little bit impatient, you could jump up and down and like wait for them, but they will walk around. So it's not a big issue, but yes, you'll be getting your 15 spawns here easily. And when you look at your spawns, it's like, okay, that looks like 15. 
do it again. The picnic reset. If you move up a little bit too far, just remember to walk back a little bit, and then there you go. Good luck on this hunt. Next up is going to be Turtwig, and Turtwig is going to be super easy. We're going to be going to the canyon once again, and just south of the canyon rest area, about southeast, we're going to go here. Super easy to notice. You just want to go to the pool where the black augurite and the cleavers usually spawn. Go down the path, and then at the very end of this path, you're going to be able to have them spawning. 15 spawns, isolate hunt, incredibly easy. You pretty much want to be on this back rock back here. And if you get that message, just move up a little bit further and then do the picnic reset. You'll get your 15 spawns of these Pokemon incredibly fast and easy. They also have group spawns. The shiny is super noticeable. It's going to be a teal color instead of that light green. So good luck on this shiny hunt. Next up, we're going to be doing a dual hunt with Chimchar and Score Bunny. Now, they spawn all over the mountainous area in the polar, and there's no way to actually isolate hunt them outside of doing a outbreak for them. But if you don't care about doing an outbreak for them, you could hunt them both at the same time by going right over here. And this is actually where we did the Beldum and Duraludon videos. So step one, you're knowing your right area when you see this Granbull. Knock out this Granbull. But you can see we are getting 15 spawns of Score Bunny and Chimchar. So what you want to do, you want to do a picnic reset right over here. And this, uh, the spawns are going to come in relatively quick. You get individuals, you get group spawns. And the shinies are also pretty obvious for both of them. Now, Chimchar is going to be, instead of orange, is going to be like more darkish red slash pink color to it. So it's definitely going to stick out. And the score bunny is going to be more of an orange color instead of a red. So it's going to be more orange, more of that toasted white color instead of like that pure white color on it. So you can see that you get your spawns here. Super fast, super easy. Good luck on this hunt. Next up is going to be Piplup in Oshawa, and we're going to be doing a Central Plaza reset. Now, they spawn anywhere you see the ice. They don't spawn in the mountains, but they spawn anywhere in the ice. And this is very similar to Score Bunny and Chimchar, as you can just run around and do this hunt. But a little bit worse is it's not the only water type that will spawn in this general area. As you can see, you are going to be getting seals and dudongs. So, dugongs and seals are going to be everywhere. It's definitely problematic, and yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of it. But if you want to do it like this, you could do a reset method by touching the right side and going forward, and hopefully you'll get your shiny. Now, the real recommendation is going to be doing a mass outbreak, or you can just run around and eventually get the shiny. But pretty much, seals do spawn everywhere if there is a land on ice. So, yeah, it's going to be a rough one definitely mass outbreak it but if you don't want to do that and you need a shiny seal you could do the reset method and at least get a shiny seal and potentially one of the starters too now our next shiny hunt is going to be snivy with spawns in the savannah area however the issue with snivy is this pokemon is not the only pokemon that spawns with a grass type sandwich and this is a pretty decent spot on the map for a picnic reset but you can see the problem immediately you get a bunch of executors and i see a couple of snivies and honestly, the best way to do this hunt is definitely going to be a mass outbreak. Now, they can spawn in clusters, which is very helpful. However, the outbreak method is going to make it so they are the only thing spawning in the general area instead of having cluster spawns of Exeggutor, which is very annoying. And pretty much wherever Snivy spawns is going to be Exeggutor. But once again, I will recommend doing a level 2 grass encounter sandwich and doing the outbreak reset. Good news is, at least shiny Snivy is very easy to tell. It's a teal color. Now, for our next shiny hunt, we're going to be hunting for Tepig. And we are in Central Plaza Canyon area. And with a fire type sandwich, you can do a town reset hunt for this. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to go back and forth. And we're going to get spawns to our left, spawns to our right in front of us. Super easy to have group spawns. I do recommend hanging out more to the left here. So, you don't have just too many spawns coming to the right. You just have them bottom left and it's pretty much in front of you. And this is where most of your spawns are gonna be coming in. And the shiny for this is gonna be easy. It's gonna be a golden piggy. So just good luck on this hunt and I'm sure you'll get it. Our next hunt is Chespin with a grass type sandwich. And this spawn's interesting because I usually enter the spawn area through Polar, even though it is a Canyon spawn. And I'm just gonna go to Polar Outdoor Classroom 1 and go into Charged Stone Cave. Now Charged Stone Cave mostly counts as a Canyon spawn. And as you can see, Chespin is the only thing that spawns in here, uh, besides the static spawns, of course, but it is the only thing that spawns with a grass-type sandwich, which makes this hunt incredibly easy. So you could do it as a runaround if you want to. However, there is going to be a phenomenal 15-spawn reset that you can do. 
and all you got to do is go to the right over here as i did i was hugging the wall and you can see they spawn in a lot cluster spawns all that good stuff got our 15 spawns and just hit that picnic reset right here and you're gonna get your 15 spawns the shiny is gonna be red so super easy to notice that red's gonna replace the green so relatively easy shiny hunt i got three in one sandwich when i was doing it on stream so super easy stuff Good luck. Now, our next hunt is going to be Finnegan, and this one is brutal. So, it's going to be in this general area of a fire type sandwich. However, just like Snivy, it is not an isolated shiny hunt. You're going to have Magbees and Magmars. Now, you can see the ratio we're looking at, right? I got like 15 spawns, but only one Finnegan appearing. So, yeah, I would not recommend doing this hunt outside of an outbreak. Outbreaks are going to be way better. You could do it as a walk around because at least the shiny for Finnegan is super easy to notice. It's going to be like a grayish color. And they do get pack spawns as well. But that is really nice. But this is definitely one of the more annoying hunts. Just as annoying as Snivy. But I feel like Snivy might be a little bit easier because you're only working against in the Snivy hunt. Executor. Here you got Magby and Magmar. So good luck. Now for an actual good shiny hunt on a water starter, we have Froki here. And Froki is super easy. So... We're going to be doing a water type sandwich at Coastal Plaza and we can do a town reset. So what we're going to do is just hit that Coastal Plaza town reset, walk back into the biome here, and you'll be able to see a bunch of Froki spawning to your right and to your left. Now, this Oracorio is a Pokemon you should definitely knock out because it does take a spawn. And it's honestly fairly obvious, the shiny Froki. It's going to be a very light blue color, so super easy for you to notice as well. It'll actually stand out. A little bit of a glow to it in my opinion but if you don't want to just do the classic town reset and just go back and forth you could do the thing where you walk out and then make a lap it also is the only water type that spawns on the grass here so you could walk around this entire zone too but it's definitely faster and easier to do it just with this town reset so good luck next up is rallet and with rallet we're actually gonna be using a flying type sandwich in the savannah and we're going to be at the Central Plaza doing a town reset method to easily shiny hunt for the Rowlet. So, as you can see here, a flying type sandwich, we're only going to be getting Rowlets. Make sure to knock out this Chansey here as this is a static spawn. So, knock it out. Don't, no more worries about that. But you can see they're all around this area. Now, to best do this hunt, I would recommend going like right over here in it'll say Central Plaza and then come back out here. And then look to your left and look to your right, and you'll see a bunch of Rallets spawning in. They have cluster spawns as well. Sometimes it can be a little bit slower. Sometimes it can be a little bit faster, but you can see them popping up. Now, if you are worried, oh, you're going to miss the shiny one, it's super obvious. It's going to be a green shiny. So instead of that brown, it's going to be green. So it's going to stick out. But if you are worried about missing some of them, you could do a walk around like here, like just do a loop instead of going back and forth. So just start here, reset, come back. Wait a little bit for the spawns and then just go around the rocks and go around that bush to get the last additional spawns you might have missed and good luck on this shiny hunt next up is going to be poplio and this is super easy we can gonna go to the central plaza with a water type sandwich and do a special town reset now it is special because you need to do it correctly so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to this little island on the right here and you're gonna walk up to the back right of this island and you'll be able to get your 15 spawns of Poplio incredibly fast and easy. And the shiny Poplio is going to have a coral ring instead of a blue ring around its neck. That's definitely the easiest way to notice. Uh, you do get group spawns. You get individual. So it depends how quickly those spawns in. Of course, group spawns will always be faster. Now, to show off the reset, super easy. All you got to do is walk backwards a little bit. Walk forward again. And just go back to the island. For our last grass type shiny hunt, we're gonna go for Grookey and we're gonna be in the coastal area with a grass type sandwich. Now, Grookey spawns in this general area on the beach as well, but on the beach, you get Blossom. So if you wanna isolate shiny hunt it, recommend going over here with a grass type sandwich and doing a picnic reset right where I'm at. I'm pretty much chilling right next to this cave over here. I like this spot because you actually get spawns over here too, as you can see which is very nice. They're not in the grass, a lot of those spawns. So it's a lot easier to see the Grookies. You will be getting some to your left and some to your right too. But this is a great place to do the picnic reset method. Now, Shiny Grookey is going to be a bit of a light yellowish green color instead of his regular green shiny or normal color. So look for that yellow monkey and should eventually get your shiny. I'll probably also say you could do this as a runaround in this general area, but you will eventually get blossoms if you go too far out of the area. 
or you could do a mass outbreak as well. That could be a little bit easier considering, you know, the tall grass can cover the monkeys just a little bit in this zone. Good luck. Now for our last fire type starter is going to be Litten. And with Litten, it's going to be relatively easy with a fire type sandwich in the canyon. This is exactly where we did a uh, Turt Twig. So we're just going to go over here to a fire type sandwich, get your 15 spawns. And even better is Shiny Litten is going to be an all white shiny. So it's going to stick out. You literally can't miss it. And absolutely an easy shiny hunt. So good luck. For our last shiny hunt, it's going to be Sobble in the Savannah area with a water type sandwich. Uh, go to Savannah Rest Area 1, and you want to be right in the middle of this pond area. Now, Sobble spawns in two little lake areas. This one's preferably better, and you want to be right here next to this tree. And to actually position yourself right in one, you can see we get a bunch of Sobbles over here, a lot of them. The best position yourself, in my opinion, you want to be sort of like right in the bush looking over to this part now the sobbles will spawn around you but you get most of your spawns right in front of you right over here and you can mess around with positioning to fix your spawns a little bit better but in general you will get a lot of sobbles on this side i think we nailed our positioning here we got pretty much a full 15 of course make sure to double check look to your left look to your right sometimes you get a couple spawning behind you but shiny sobbles will be super easy for you to notice. Just look for a purple a flag on its head instead of that yellow flag. It's going to be incredibly obvious and easy to shiny hunt for this living shiny family. But there we have it, guys. That is going to be the ultimate guide for the shiny starters in the Indigo Disc. Relatively fast and easy. Some of them, of course, mass outbreak only. Which, you know, if you get those mass outbreaks, definitely stop everything you're doing and go for those hunts. And try to get that living shiny dex as quickly as possible. So good luck to all the shiny hunters out there. And of course, I will be making more Pokemon guides for now and in forever. So definitely leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out and have a good one. And Sobble is the last Pokemon that you can shiny hunt in this Dex. Currently gouging fire, raging bolt, iron crown, iron boulder, terrapagas, walking wake, iron leaves, and petra run are all shiny locked. I don't think we'll be able to ever shiny hunt them in generation nine. We may be able to get them in mystery gift events, so stay tuned for the channel for some updates on that. But for now, we can only shiny hunt up to 235 in the decks. But hopefully, all my ultimate guys have been helpful. Hopefully, you were able to complete all your dexes, get all the shinies that possible. You can get all 700 plus of them in the game. It's a lot of Pokemon, but I believe you can do it. And of course, guys, like this type of content, enjoy these videos. Please leave a like, subscribe if you're new. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out and have a good one.